Yo, what is going on, everybody? Executives here coming at you with Mage PvP Vanilla Guide. Now, first off, I'll start off with a Deep Frost Mage spec for talents. We're going to do two into Arcane Subtlety, and then you could either put five into Improved Arcane Missiles or five into Arcane Focus. I like Arcane Focus uh, because it's the less chance for people to resist your Arcane Explosion. Then we're going to do five into Clear Casting. One into Arcane Resilience, two into Magic Attunement, and then two into Improved Counterspell. Then we're going to do Imp Frost Bolt, Ice Shards, Frostbite, Improved Frost Nova, and Permafrost. With uh, two in pier Piercing Ice, and then one in Cold Snap, Arctic Reach, Shatter, uh, Ice Block, Improved Cone of Cold, and then Ice Barrier. Did I miss anything? Uh, and then one into improved blizzard. So this is your basic uh, deep frost build for PvP. If you are leveling, if you don't have that much gear, even if you have a decent amount of gear, this is the spec I recommend the most. You've got a lot of survivability with ice barrier and ice block. You can cold snap to reset the cooldown of all your ice spells, and uh, you're going to be slowing your opponents heavily with this permafrost. So I highly recommend this spec uh, if you're you know, new, or if uh, you're not very geared, or any of those situations. Um, so this spec is really, really, really good for fighting melee, and de definitely pretty good for fighting casters as well. You've got that improved counter spell, so even if you miss your counter spell, it's still a blanket silence for f four four seconds, um, and it's really good. You've got that increased dampen magic or amplify magic on yourself. Uh, that's really good for survivability if you want to buff yourself with uh, Dampen Magic because you're not going to be getting any heals. It's really good for that. You've got the increased armor, um, and then you've got all the slows and stuff for kiting melee. So yeah, I'll cover Elemental spec in a little bit, but for now I just want to show you a little bit of gameplay with uh, Deep Frost. Alright, so here we are on the Frost Mage. Now I'm going to go over a little bit of spells here. Um... So let's start off in the Arcane Tree. Now we have this spell called Amplify Magic. For those of you who don't know, it amplifies the magic uh, against the target party member, increasing damage taken from spells by up to 112 and healing uh, from spells by up to 225. Now what this translates into is if you're fighting a caster, he does more damage to you, but you get healed for more. If you fight a melee, he does normal damage, but you get healed for more. Um, and then the opposite of that is called Dampen Magic. So it dampens the magic uh, against the target party member, decreasing damage taken by spells by up to 135 and healing by up to 270. So if you're fighting a caster, the caster will do less damage to you, but you will also receive less healing, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to cover that. Another thing to watch for is the spell called Clear Casting. Basically what it means is that once you cast a spell, you have a chance of a 10% chance of entering a clear casting state, reducing the mana cost of your next spell by 100%. So, clear casting on Elysium, or Light's Hope, Lightbringer, whatever you want to call it, can proc off of pretty much anything. It can proc off of a rank 1 blizzard, it can proc off of wands, it can proc off of an arcane explosion, uh, it could even proc off of ice barrier. So, it's all something to keep in mind. The more abilities that you do, the more chance you have of getting a clear casting. Next thing I'm going to talk about are mana rubies. Now a lot of people don't know that mana rubies stack. So I can make one of each kind of mana ruby and they will. They, I could all have them in my bags and they will all uh, share a cooldown but it means that I don't have to make another one later. So this is really good for PvE, this is really good for PvP. Um, if I use a mana ruby now I could use another one in two minutes and another one if I'm still in combat. Uh, so yeah that's something to keep in mind. Last thing I'm going to cover before I start to cover uh, actual rotation or you know how to PvP in general is this spell called uh, Detect Magic. Uh, detects beneficial, beneficial magic effects on the target for two minutes. Now you probably see a lot of PvPers putting Detect Magic on a target once they sheep it. And the reason for this is for two reasons. One, it's a debuff slot. So if a priest were, uh, or if a pally were to dispel this person, they'd have to dispel twice. Once to get off detect magic, once to get off the sheep. Also, it allows me to see. Well, this person has uh, only elixir of giants and mongoose on it, but it allows me to see what buffs this person has, and allows maybe my priest or my pally or whatever it is to dis to a purge or offensive dispel it, or um, you know just a heads up. Oh, this person's you know 
he's he's potted, he's probably going to hit me pretty hard. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it's always a good idea to put a detect magic up on the target. It costs zero mana, it doesn't put you in combat, um, and it's kind of like a, a good debuff slot. Next thing I'm going to cover is Shatter. Now, what Shatter is, is it increases the critical strike chance of all of your uh, spells against frozen targets by 50%. This is huge. This is what makes Frost so powerful in PvP, our Shatter combos. So if this warrior charges me, I can Frost Nova him, and then I'll cast a Frost Bolt, which is 50% chance to crit, and right after that I'll cast a Cone of Cold, which is another 50% chance to crit. So it looks something like this. A Frost Nova, and then right as Frost Bolt ends, I'll frost, uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll cone a cold, and I get a double shatter effect. That's a lot of damage to someone. And then I can cold snap and repeat the same process into a, a frost bolt cone of cold. Boom. Person's dead. It's a fully geared warrior. I almost just, I killed him with four moves, basically. All right, so I covered shatter, um, and there isn't really much else to cover for uh, deep frost. The, the biggest thing, though, is cold snap. This ability is, is so overpowered in PvP. It resets the cooldown of every single one of your frost spells. So, if I frost Nova, if I cone a cold, if I ice block, if I ice barrier, and then cold snap, I get all of those back again, giving me a second ice barrier, a second cone of cold, a second frost Nova, and a second ice block. It is huge. And that's what makes Deep Frost so good, is because you just have so much utility and survivability at your feet, especially when fighting a melee DPS. Um, so yeah, the last thing I'll cover is Improved Counterspell. Um, if you're fighting a Mage, or if you're fighting a Paladin, or something, you can you can quickly uh, Improved Counterspell them to Blanket Silence them, then cast a Sheep on them so they can't really do anything. One last thing I forgot to cover is rank 1 Frostbolt. Now a lot of people, they would just drag on the highest rank Frostbolt and then that would be it. But it's very important, especially as Frost, even if you're not Frost, even if you're Elemental or Fire, to cast rank 1 Frostbolts. If you're specced into it, the cast time of rank 1 Frostbolts is 1 second, it's 1 global. So if I'm casting rank 1 Frostbolts, this person is constantly slowed by 40%. Uh, even more with permafrost and uh, your chill effects. So the more you cast rank from frostbolt to kite away these warriors, the better off you're going to be. Last thing I'm going to cover here is elemental mage. Now elemental mage, yeah, I'll, I'll just go over talents first before I start talking about it. We're going to go five into impact for that stun. We're going to go two into flame throwing. We're going to go five into ignite, very important. Two into incinerate. One into pyroblast. Two into burning soul. Improved scorch. Blast Wave, and then Critical Mass. Then we're going to do 5 into Improved Frostbolt, Frostbite, Frost Nova, Permafrost, 1 into uh, Blizzard for Rank 1 Blizzard, um, Cold Snap, Arctic Reach, Shatter Effect, Kona Cold, and Ice Block. Now this is your basic Elemental Mage spec. You can switch a few things around if you want, but uh, this is definitely an advanced spec. You have to be very, very geared for this. You have to have a lot of HP and a lot of mana in order to be a very good Elemental Mage. The reason why Elemental Mage is so good is it because it combines both Fire and Frost trees. You get Blast Wave, you get Ignite, you get ice block and cold snap and shatter it is so retardedly good in pvp if you have the gear for it that you'll just be an unstoppable force against anyone now elemental mage is very similar to frost mage except you just have a few more spells you've got blast wave you've got pyroblast and you lose out on ice barrier so instead of ice barrier you're going to be popping a mana shield especially if you've got the set bonus uh for the mana shield or the gloves um i mean so the difference between elemental and Frost is that your targets are not going to be as slowed, but you're going to be doing a lot more damage to them. Even if I just Sheep and then Pyroblast this guy, that's a lot of damage right there. Then once out of that Pyroblast, you know, I could uh, Nova him into a Blast Wave, into a Kona Cold, into this, then start casting some Scorches to get his Ignite up. You just have so much utility. Boom, he's got Stun from Scorch because it's a Fire Spell into another stun like elemental is just so broken if you're geared for it and i highly highly recommend that you check it out if you've already checked out frost um but yeah that's pretty much it for this guide i covered elemental i covered uh deep frost i'm not going to cover arcane because that's not really viable and i'm not going to cover fire because that's not really viable unless you want to do the um three minute mage spec but you can go look up 
uh, a guide or a video on how to do that. If you're sitting here, say, Executives, I have a mage, but I'm losing to a warrior every single time. I highly recommend that you guys go check out some PvP videos. There are some really, really good players out there, especially really good mages. There's uh, guys like uh, LolWTF, uh, my personal favorite, Wedding, uh, Vertinen. There's a bunch of guys who are just, they've dedicated their their WoW careers to just being the best vanilla mage that they can possibly be. And I encourage you to go check out these guys, and half of them aren't even geared. They've got stuff like Lincoln Sword of Mastery just because it looks cool. Like, they don't even care about the gear that much. They're just, they've got the items, they've got the Goblin Rocket Helm, they've got the Lincoln's Boomerang, they've got, um, you know, whatever it is, but it allows them to just 1vx, you know. I could sit here, rocket stun this guy, and then blast wave and sapper charge at the same time, and then I, this guy's pretty much already dead. You know, like I highly recommend that you guys go and check out some PvP videos and see what they do and see if you can copy them. You know, these guys will counter spell warriors so you can't get charge off so they can get them in counter uh, so they can get them in combat. They will save ice block for blind. They will uh, they they won't blink any stuns ever. They might just only ice block a stun or um, they might save their PvP trinket for something. I don't know. Whatever the case is. I'm sure that you guys could learn a lot from these really good mages. Myself, I'm not that I'm not very good of a mage, but I'm I am knowledgeable of a lot of the items and stuff. I have made a video on almost all of the vanilla items, like the rocket boots, like the rocket helm, like Lincoln's boomerang and skull of impending doom and stuff. I've already made that video, so if you want to go check that out, I'll uh, link it once the video's done. Anyways, uh, I covered everything. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.